Dr. Mimuna, let's start off this conversation with um, uh, the regular question for our listening uh, viewers and audience. What exactly is mental illness? There are different uh, definitions of mental illness. Uh, what exactly uh, could be called mental illness? Um, so mental illness is a medical condition. Mental illness is a medical disorder. Medical uh, illness is a medical challenge. And this is where we, uh, we actually need to educate the general public because now we have a law, right? But the difference, right? I, I think before I go into what a disorder is, it's good for us to know what the normal is. Um, because if you look at the abnormal, you may not understand where the normal is coming from. So there's a difference between mental health and mental illness. So like you said, what is mental illness, right? Which is a disorder, which is a you know, challenge, an issue. But what is mental health? It is so beautifully de you know, defined by the World Health Organization, the ability for an individual to do these four things. And the reason why I say four things, so that you can pick them you know easily and very relatable if i just ram through the whole definition without you know breaking it down you may be confused so i just want nigerians to be, be to understand this relatively and understand it very quickly so is the ability for an individual you i all of us right to have the potentials number one the potentials to re, to the ability to realize your true potentials that is one part of it the second part is the ability for you to um deal with the day-to-day -day stressors or hazards of life that is the second part of it the third part is the ability to work productively and fruitfully that is the third part of it and the fourth part of it is the ability to give back to the community the ability Ability to give back to you to the society that is such a beautiful well defined you know um, um uh, way of saying this is what mental health is your ability as an individual work productively work fruitfully realize your potentials in life deal with the day to day stressors you know give back to the society but now what is the difference between that and mental illness mental illness is a medical condition like i said it's a disorder that affects the way you think the way you act and the way you behave so you see that ability for you to do all that if there's a challenge it affects the way you think the way you act and the way you behave and that is just a simple you know very relatable way of breaking it down without using any medical jargons all right doctor happy new year to you again uh, talking about mental well-being i remember i told me the first time i would have this kind of discussion with you but the angle we're taking it from uh, today is to see uh, how legislation has been able to help in really fixing the citizen's psychological well-being. And if we remember in 2021, President Muhammad Buhari did sign the Mental Health Act into law, even though we had something like that in 2007. Uh, since uh, the beginning of your practice up until now, how has the signing of that act been able to impact uh, the well-being of Nigerians, all the services that really should come with such an act uh, going to the Nigerian people. Beautiful. So for, for all of us, we had a very um, well-delivered um, DHL message at the beginning of the year, which is January 5th, and which is the day the president signed the mental health bill into law, meaning that mental health for Nigerians is now officially a priority. That, for me, that is how I attack that mental health um, um, law. Um, it's not that we are going to be a plan, but we have been using the Lunacy Act. And the Lunacy Act of 1958, which is, you know, way, way outdated. And that was just an upgrade of the Lunacy um, Ordinance of 1916 which was upgraded in 1958 by the British colonizers to Lunacy, Regional Lunacy Act, and which we have been using. So 65 years later, we now have a law, which means that we in Nigerians, our mental health is now a priority. I have been in private practice for the past 10 years, and of course, which I, which I did my residency at Neuropsychiatric Hospital Yaba for six years, and in private practice for the past 10 years. That Lunacy Act, 
it's not favorable it's dehumanizing it's um it impedes on the fundamental right of people living with mental illnesses it 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 talks about lunatics and idiots that is what that act contains it doesn't regard people living with mental illnesses like people that, like me, my, me and it doesn't involve treatment it just means that if is seen or look as a lunar somebody with mental illness they should be banished into an asylum without men they should be there for observation the the, the power lies on the magistrate and the med practitioner that is in charge at that point in time but of course with the act now we are looking at you know people and um, people living mental illnesses taking charge of their treatment being part of their treatment in as much as we still do for involuntary admission they are not of that treatment they can be you know regarded and told this is what it is but they are also part of that treatment and their human right is no longer going to be infringed upon they are no longer going to be banished and you know stigmatized discriminated in the workplaces in the society in the political sector so for me that is a major step in the right direction and this is what we have been advocating for for the over 20 years fantastic uh, dr memuna F fantastic we're all excited at the signing of the bill now is an act uh, we seem to have a direction as a people uh, where to go in terms of um, dealing with mental mental concerns. However, uh, this also comes with some challenges. Um, it's not just enough to have a, a, I mean, a bill signed into law, it's now an act. Uh, there are some downsides that could be identified with, with this bill. If there is any, could you tell us what the, what the concerns, or concerns could, you could have with the act? Yeah, we have concerns. Um, yes, the bill says we have the uh, mental health commission, uh, we have um, it the a lot domesticated in all states. Um, the human rights of people living with mental illnesses will be protected. Mental health funding will, must be done. You know, when we say domesticated in all um, states, in me and, and domesticated in all the health sector, meaning from the primary health um, sector to the secondary to the tertiary. Most as it is right now. People living with mental illnesses are either going to the secondary um, 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 sector or the tertiary, meaning teaching hospitals, federal uh, medical centers, general hospitals. We really don't have it domesticated in the primary health care uh, centers. So that is a damn part of it. A big damn part. And the sad the healthcare sector, in the primary health care centers is the bedrock. It's such a foundation for the for the healthcare sector to, to move, to be better, to be well grounded, for people to assess uh, no, not only mental health services, healthcare services that are accessible, affordable, av available, and of course acceptable to the people. And so if we say we have to domesticate this law in all stratum of the structure of the um, healthcare, from primary healthcare to the uh, tertiary there is going to be an issue because we don't have the right requisite expertise in those sector. We, in fact, our primary health care centers, most of them are not working. A lot of them are being um, um, you know, um, taken, uh, they've been taken over by gold sheep and, you know, abandoned, right? So we know we are going to have a problem in that aspect. But like I said, the law is already there. Of course, it will be gazetted, it will be pushed into the general public, we'll see what it is, and we will start the implementation. So for me now, is ensuring implementation. Ensuring implementation, let us even get it domesticated. Beauty about that part is that, aside from we advocating um, a media around sensitization, like what we are doing right now, so people to understand that there's not a mental health law, there's a beautiful, well-designed, tested, reliable, validated document by the World Health Organization called the MHCAP, which is Mental Health Gap Action Program. That is a program that already been done and is with the WHO, and we all have it with those of us in this sector. It is a document that is supposed to be used for capacity building in those kind of settings that are not clinical settings. So setting schools, churches, and um, workplaces, like 
care center. Those can be used to train the uh, community health extension workers there on how to elicit early signs and symptoms to illness, refer a and when people come back to the community, they know what to do. So for us, that is one damn part because we don't have primary health care centers well trained. Another mm -hmm. damn part of it is the fact that we have one psychiatrist to one million Nigerians. We have five psychiatric nurses to like a hundred thousand Nigerians. So that is also a huge deficit. There's an exodus of mental professionals out of the country. And of course, there's, a, there's brain drain, there's jackpot syndrome. So infrastructural and human resources issue is also going yeah, to sure. be a problem. Mm -hmm. But at least we have to start from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we now have a law in place. Thank and you. that can now explore other areas we need to build up. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Maimon. I think for an average person watching this morning, it's maybe news to them. Now, which one is Mental Health Act again? When did it ever happen? I remember that we reported it right here, but many Nigerians, uh, just as it could happen in some other instances, to hardly, you know, know when some laws are passed uh, which can be beneficial to them uh, what are those things that the mental act that's in operation and that's the one for 2021 cover what are those things that it, it covers for people who may be in need of it so our new mental health act now which has been signed by the president which was done january 5th 2023 is going to eradicate and take away the lunacy act of 1958 which we have been using and some of the benefits or some of the things in that um act or that law is that it is going to ensure that nigerians are pr properly um, taken care of our mental health is definitely not a priority and of course the fact that our well the well-being of citizens through programs that will promote our mental health and prevent mental health and psychological disabilities are provided there will be effective uh, treatment modalities there will be domestication of the mental health laws in all um, states meaning that there will be a mental health dex in all states then of course the human rights of people living with mental illnesses will definitely be you know looked into so because right now stigma discrimination somebody's at work uh because you have a mental illness they will you know relieve you of your job why not somebody who has hypertension and diabetes i listened to the program this morning on hypertension i'm like okay people with hypertension are everywhere you know living their life and holding down jobs what about people living with mental illnesses so that law is also talking about protection of their human rights and of course they are going to be part of their treatment as against the way in the lunacy act where they will be banished into an asylum treatment wouldn't be given and they are just there and of course they are Will also be safeguarded so these are some of the things we are talking about and of course mental health funding because the abuja declaration of 2001 said that at least 10 percent to 50 percent of the um um of our budget should go into health and like three to five percent to go into mental health we are really hoping those things work because right now we do not have that nigeria has never dedicated up to 10 percent to um health care financing but at least we now have the law and like i said it's the right step in the right direction and it, the honors lies on us on uh, stakeholders in ensuring that the laws are not properly going to be implemented and executed that is where most times we, our problem is in nigeria we usually have beautiful laws implementation and execution is most times our problem and that is where stakeholders like us are going to ensure we do that you know the professionals cso's human rights activists uh, people live with mental illness so it's going to take a multidisciplinary multi-sectoral approach in ensuring that um these laws are properly seen um to be implemented and executed uh, very true dr bimuna uh, i mean fantastic the law the law is there right now but then there are underlining challenges that could make um uh the law uh beneficial to, to every one of us. Uh, very key uh, in my mind is uh, the number of uh, personnel that we have within this sector. Uh, that I think is a very major challenge. Uh, in spite of whatever laws that we put in place to safeguard the rights and inform uh, the people, if we don't have the right personnel and uh, uh, enough of them right now, I mean, it's as well as um, uh, building on nothing. So I think. Uh, 
how do we go about encouraging uh, more medicals to go into uh, treatments, areas of, area, areas of mental illness and treatments in Nigeria? I think that how do we encourage more people to go into How do we get more personnel into, into, into this scheme, this, um, this area of treatment? How do we get more personnel into this area of treatment? There's people living with mental illnesses or um, experts. Experts, the, personnel, uh, experts, experts. Experts. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it, 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 goes, yeah, but it goes way back into encouraging our children to, um, to uh, embrace the STEM. STEM meaning science, technology, engineering, math, math right? Um, a number of us have children that are not even looking into reading medicine. And so, because for you to be an expert in this field of um, mental health, um, um, the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the um, psychotherapist, the psychiatric nurses, you have to do science, right? So, our major challenge is, you know, ensuring that we have people that children that will be encouraged to embrace science in school, so that they'll be able to read any of this. Um, Courses that will help in the mental health space. Um, I think that is where truly we need to, because you cannot force somebody who has read another course to come and then read the second degree. Even those of us that are doctors, before we become psychiatrists, we have to go to medical school and then now go into residency to be psychiatrists. Then, of course, psychologists after the BSc four years, they have to now do a master's to become a specialist, maybe a clinical psychologist, educational uh, counseling psychologist. Likewise, psychiatric nurses, after the school of nursing or BSc nursing, they do another 18 months to become psychiatric nurses. And of course, the baseline is this, that everybody that I've just mentioned have to do sciences for them to be able to, you know, uh, be a part of this. So encouragement has to start for we parents, the government ensuring that we have more children into science, parents encouraging our children to go into science, uh, starting with somebody like me, ensuring my children going, I don't want to talk about what my children want to read. But again, this is what it is. We have to encourage more people to embrace coming into science. But the, 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 the flip side of that is that we can do tax shifting and tax sharing. You know, tax shifting and tax sharing, yeah. meaning even though we don't have the um, requisite um, human resources to deploy these services, when we do tax shifting and tax sharing, we are going to have capacity building in getting people that can be trained, like primary health care workers, community health uh, care extension workers, to train to, to know the basic signs and symptoms. And so they will now help the system. It's like a value chain. So when we have the expert on one side, we also have people that can be trained to help deploy the service at the primary level, like the first mental first aid. So they can pick early signs and symptoms. They can be trained, talk to and um, train about the different type of medication. So they, there's a proper reference system on where how to refer patients yeah. and how to manage patients that come to them. And if there are crises, they are the SOPs they will follow to you know, also repair and get experts on board. Again, we have telemedicine now. So telemedicine, technologically driven services that they can, so even those that have jackpot can be part of the telemedicine. So if you have a telemedicine platform, doctors, nurses that are outside the country can mm -hmm. also be part of that platform and deploy those services to who and, and who needs it when and whenever okay. available. Uh, well, that's very interesting. I know that a friend of mine, especially during COVID-19, what the world had started to deploy will be telemedicine because you can see your doctor and he or she can give you uh, some advice and recommendations, you know, via, uh, you know, television, that is telemedicine, so to speak. Uh, Dr. Memunat, let's break it down for those who may not even understand that this program is basically for them to use the information that we're disseminating this morning. As I was growing up, even in my adult life, I used to see uh, lunatics walk in the street. You see madmen. Let's put it in that layman's language you can understand. And then on different occasions, you might see um, officials of uh, governments, could be local state governments, trying to help such people to psychiatric homes. Uh, at this point in time, I remember that uh, I read through the other acts, the bills that were enforced, and acts that were enforced before uh, the signing of this one on January 5. And of course, congratulations, we heard President Buhari had failed on two occasions before this one was passed. And so I can really understand your excitement this morning. 
In layman's terms, what are those benefits that those Nigerians whose family members are suffering from mental health illnesses, uh, how can they access the benefits that are contained in the act? Good, uh, and I think that is very important because one of the downside of people uh, the, uh, the law is the fact that um, family members, loved ones that have people living with mental illnesses sometimes can be overburdened and their quality of life can also be affected because they are taking care of somebody, um, a loved one living with mental illness. And we do understand that like other medical conditions, some of these mental illnesses can be you know, debilitating and you find that somebody who has to even resign from his work to take care of that individual. So this law now is talking about the fact that there should be facilities. There, are, there should be um, um, infrastructural um, uh, places where people can actually go and put their relatives that have mental illnesses. Or like before, you know, there's this a lot of huge, huge stigma and discrimination attached to people with mental illness. It's still there when it's not like a, it has gone away. And the fact that over 70% of Nigerians living with mental illnesses do not have access to mental health care. Yes, the damn part is the fact that um, human resources are not there. But the encouraging part of family members that have people with mental illnesses right now is the fact that you now have a law that this um, your pe your person living with mental illness can be taken into a hospital, can be seen, can be evaluated, can be taken care of. The human right of that individual would not. Uh, um, trampled upon and of course the lunacy talked about the fact that if you have a mental illness your family your property should be um, used to take care of you those are some of the things that we are we cannot you know in this current dispensation be talking about that now in 2023 so family members is, they are looking at accessibility affordability availability of these services are these services available yes even though they are not you know the way it should be they are not everywhere are these services accessible yes because at least we have go um, government establishment federal medical centers teaching hospitals in fact all teaching hospitals must have a mental health unit because that is one requisite for training medical students is, are, is it affordable not nest not really healthcare is not even affordable in nigeria so this is where the national health insurance scheme or now that it's an authority act should also be deployed in ensuring that Nigerians' mental health services are well covered in this authority act and not sidelined. A lot of the HMOs don't even have the mental health services. Law is talking about whether it's the authority act, HMOs, they should have mental health services incorporated so that families that can even afford, they, they can insure their relatives and, 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 and make them. Um, the burden, the financial burden will reduce on them because if you pay for health insurance, it's automatically a, a good way to also save money and making sure that you get health uh, health care whenever you need it. So this is what the law is a good um, a benefit. The, uh, family members will really benefit from because it's ensuring it's going to ensure that these all aspects must ensure that must have mental health services incorporated and must be seen executed. So I think that for me, the biggest is that um, having insurance for, because out of pocket payment can lead to poverty. And we all know that inflation and uh, cost of living is very high as it is right now. But when we do it, insurance is cheaper, is easily accessible when and if. So if you, have, you live in Lagos and you have issues and you are in Kaduna, with health insurance, you can assess a hospital there without you coming to Lagos to go and get it. So for me, that is a huge benefit for family members that they will enjoy with this uh, mental health law. Well, I think we can just anchor the conversation at this very point. Uh, so much has been said about um, the Mental Health um, Act. We're excited about it and we are hoping that um, uh, we can do all we need to do to reduce the downsides and get people begin to benefit from this new act around the mental illness. Thank you once again, Dr. Memuna uh, Yusuf Kadri, um, mental health expert. So good to have you talk to us always. Thank you very much, yeah. everyone. We shall sure, sure talk base with you again uh, soonest.
Yeah, so next. All right, people, that was Dr. Mimuna Yusuf. Uh, we'll go on the break when we come back. We'll talk a bit of politics before we round up the show. Don't go away.